Do you have a squarey racer upstairs? Sure. So gather your supplies. And I think we'll just start out with a little bit of sketching. If you have a scrap piece of paper or um, a piece of paper from the printer that you can use to do a bit of sketching on. Because we're going to look at the dragonflies and, and kind of discover how, they, how they're made. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what we're going to do today. And um, does anybody have a question? Oh, you probably already muted it. So. Tom, should I put it so that they can go down on down? Yeah. So paper and pencil to do a bit of sketching, and we'll go along and, and do that together. So we're going to make it so that you can look over my shoulder. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, now remember, you're upside down to the. I always forget. All right, so um, I've started a little sketch on a piece of scrap paper of my dragonfly, and I'm going to go over it with a marker so that you can see it. Now, you'll want to <clears throat> just use a pencil, and then after we've done a bit of doodling and, and learning about the dragonfly, then we'll go ahead and draw it on our watercolor paper. So that's how we'll do that today. Um, so here we go. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go over the marks that I've already made, like I said, so that you guys can see it. So the dragonfly is going to, we're going to start with his head. And I'm just drawing a simple circle here. And then I'm giving him his little eyes, which are basically half circles. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then this part of his body is called the thorax, which I learned today. And that's the part right here that his wings are attached to. And it's really quite a muscular center for locomotion. And it, this part right here controls his wings and his head and his little legs. So it's kind of interesting. So then I'm going to work on his abdomen here, which comes down. And if you're just thinking about it, it's a curved line and another curved line that meets down at the bottom. And that's a real simplified version of it. But basically, that's what it is. And then this part of his body is divided into about 10 segments. Sometimes they're kind of hard to see because they're way up in this area. But I'm just going to make some marks here. Now, you don't have to do this right now, but it's just kind of fun to get these done. And I have to count and make sure I've got enough. One, two, three, four. Nine, ten. So these are the parts that we, we talked about, the little segments. Another really interesting thing is that if I measure the wings in relationship to his body, it's kind of kind of cool to see that it's half, or excuse me, his body from not including his head is going to be as pretty much as long as his wings are. So if you're wondering how long to make the wings, they're about the same um, length as from here to here and here to here. So you can make some marks on your paper to get those organized. And then they're really just simple curved, um, curved lines, but you can also look at a detailed drawing and get them a little more precise. But I'm just getting these drawn here. And actually, this comes down a little here and connects up to this thorax part of his body. So it's kind of fun to do these little dragonflies and to think about where, you know, that they're flying around so much right now. I was at Bunker Park and they were just sort of almost swarming. It was really interesting. And then I read that they really eat a lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> So that's a good thing, I would say, that they're eating up those mosquitoes. So there's a really simple drawing of a dragonfly. Um, and you can get that sketched on your paper now. And think about how you want to place it on the watercolor paper, OK? So I've done a couple. Now, these I did not do with um, marker. Excuse me. So are these upside down, Tom? Or? Um, I can't see it. 
Maybe I need to turn it the other way. Okay. So I've drawn these on a piece of, this is um, when actually about five by seven piece of watercolor paper. And I've drawn a little, little lily pad <laughs> underneath him, which is kind of fun. And I put some other lily pads on here. So that would be one idea that you could do. This other one that I did, I'll do two of them today for you, but this one is just positioned on the paper so that he's, part of his wings are kind of going off the page. And I'll show you the ones that I finished so that you can see how these are. And it probably needs to go this way. Okay, so one thing when you're getting this drawn on your watercolor paper, I want you to try to remember to offset his body so that it's not just going from corner to corner. So I started his head right here, and you could certainly start it on the other side too, it doesn't matter which side you started on, but make it so that it's not just a diagonal, okay? Um, and it just makes it a little bit more interesting. This one, um, I painted the dragonfly first, and then I did the background. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you another one. Okay, is that right? Um, this little guy was painted with um, the back. I, I drew the dragonfly with pencil, and then I painted the background first, which was another way to do it. So you can paint the background. In other words, paint around the, the dragonfly first, and then do the dragonfly. And this one, he's got his wings that are kind of going off the page. You know, it's kind of nice to do that sometimes. It makes it more interesting. All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple of photographs that I've found. And I don't think it matters which way these go, but I guess it could. So, yeah, so this is a, this is a beauty. I love, you know, looking at the way that the wings are and the beautiful colors in the wings. And you can always go back later after your, painting is done and add these these details and this line work with either a, a um, small round brush would do it you could use a watercolor pencil or you could use a colored pencil that'd be kind of fun so beautiful beautiful all right here's another one that is really cool that i found and thankfully we had a lot of um ink in our printer, so I was able to print these off, but this one is, is very beautiful too. Can, can you point out the wings with your finger a little bit? Oh, okay. Yeah, so the wings are really, really cool right in through here. They're very transparent, some of them are. Um, one of the things I was reading about dragonflies, and here's another one uh, that's pretty neat. One of the things I was reading about dragonflies is that they don't sting, and they don't carry diseases. Um, they spend most of their life as little baby dragonflies, and they hatch from eggs underwater, and they, they stay in this stage for close to two years. And then they're, when they're adult dragonflies, they live for just about two weeks. There's a lot of different kinds of dragonflies, and they're, one of the cool things about them is that they can fly straight up and down, and they can fly from side to side and they can also hover like a like a helicopter which i thought was really really cool and they're also aerial hunters in other words they're eating everything when they're flying around so that's a good thing with the mosquito population so kind of fun they also have really really good vision and when you think about their head it really has mostly um it's mostly the eyes in there so i think that's kind of cool and they also grab the insects with their feet and they have really sharp teeth. So another thing that I was reading is that their na the names of all these different mosquitoes, or excuse me, I almost said mosquitoes. <laughs> um, the, the names for these, um, the dragonflies are really descriptive. There's the, the common green darner and there's the widow skimmer. And that one sounds kind of cool because it skims across the water as they hunt. Um, the blue dasher and the white tail and the wandering glider. I just think the names are so fun. Um, so dragonflies are really fun to watch. Like I said, when we were 
walking along at uh, Bunker Park and they were just swarming all over the place. So really fun. So let's start. I hope you've been drawing while I've been talking here. Um, and we'll start working on our, on our little painting. I also found out one more interesting thing is that Minnesota has a dragonfly association. And I went to the website and um, there's all kinds of interesting things that that website had to offer. So kind of fun. Anyway, all right, so let's get started on our painting. And I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work and kind of look at my sample here with the, this one, maybe, I don't know. But I also have this other one, which is kind of nice to do, so. Maybe we'll, We'll do this one first and then I'll do the other one second. So you can follow along with me in the couple paintings if you want to. So maybe quickly we could see if there's any questions, Tom. Do you think that's a good idea? Yeah, that's good. Okay, idea. so any questions would be good right now. If anybody has one, you can also, um, I think you can post your, your questions in the chat. So we'll look for that. You see anything, Tom? Um, I do not yet. Okay, all right. Well, we'll just get started. So I'm gonna do the first one. And I'm thinking about using blue for the wings and yellow and a little bit of pink. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna start with, um, I think I'll start with his body and get that organized first. Can do that. So I'm mixing up some color here and I'm going to use a little bit of blue. So any blue will work. And I'm getting a nice little mix here. Just as a quick reminder, um, make sure that you mute yourself which would be great. Okay, so I'm gonna start in right here. Actually, I think I'll start at the head, sorry. So I'm gonna start at his head and I'm gonna get that painted right here. So I'm just going in with my color. And a little purple too with my blue. And I'm just filling this in. Now, when I paint this, I, I did not wet this first because it's a very small area. So I'm just gonna get that color in. And as it starts to, um, to, it's still wet, so I can drop in color here to start giving it some shape. And I can always go back. I'm going down here now and bringing some of this purple color down into this area here. I can also leave some little slices of white. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I left a bit of white. In other words, I didn't put any paint there. So I, I left it empty. And it's a nice highlight because with watercolor, as many of you know, the paper White is the lightest light that we are going to use with watercolor. So keep our keep our paper white happening by leaving it that area empty. And it's great for highlights. Okay, so now I'm going to move down the body a little bit. And I'm just kind of keeping it really simple as I paint. But I'm going to leave some white here too as I go. So I'm gonna just leave a little slice of white as I create this, these segments in his body. We can always go back, dries, 
and add another layer of darkness if we want to, or highlights, or not highlights, but the um, detail work on top of the initial wash. So. These are fun to do. really fun to do. different color combinations and you can paint these pretty quickly. You can be very loose in the way that you apply the paint and you can also be a little more detailed. So it's totally fine. You can change the colors up as you go along. I just added a little bit more blue down here at the bottom of his body. And I'm going in now with a little bit of blue around the edges here. Okay, I'll hold that up so you can see. While the, while the uh, wash is still wet, it's, it's a good time to be adding deeper values. In other words, you're getting a stronger uh, mix of paint, and so it's going to be darker. You can work from light to dark on something like this. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I can use a dark color, like mix a little bit of your blue and maybe with a little bit of green. And you can do his little eyes. I didn't use black, I just mixed green with my blue and purple. You could put a little bit of red in there too, that would help. All right, so next step, we're gonna get going on these wings here. So for the wings, I kind of want that part to dry a little bit before I go on. So, but it should be okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think what I'll do is I'll <coughs> take my blue and also before I do that, I'm gonna dampen this wing here up at the top Top. This is this top wing is called the fore wing, which is interesting, and I'm getting it a little damp, and that's really a nice thing to do because it will help these colors blend together right on the paper. So sometimes we mix the color on our palette to see if we like it, and we can always test it and check it out and see if we're happy with it. We can also let it mix right here on our paper. So that's what I'm doing right now. I've got clean water that I have placed there. And I'm gonna go into this corner area with my blue and I, I'm okay with it running from his body. I don't mind that it's doing that and it's actually flowing very nicely now out to the outer edge. Hopefully you guys can see that. So here we go again with my blue and I'm just keeping it very soft. His wings are transparent, right? But it's still, it's kind of fun to add lots of color, if, you know, if you want to. So here we go, I'm gonna get a little bit different blue here in there. And I'm just dotting that color in and letting it, letting it move into the initial wash that I had applied before. So I'm rinsing my brush off, and now I'm going to go into green. So if you have a nice green, um, I wouldn't use a real, real dark green. Maybe take your green and mix it with a little yellow, which would be nice and brighten it up a bit. So I think I'll do that. I have lemon yellow, which is really my new favorite yellow. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I've mixed my lemon yellow in with the green. I'll show you my palette so you can see what that's looking like. And I'm gonna take that 
and start working it into this area. So I know that because this is damp, I also know that the green and the blue are going to mix and be really pretty together, kind of making a little bit of a, a teal. So that's what I'm doing right now, and I'm letting it blend. to this area right here. I'm just kind of putting it in different spots. And because, remember this is wet, it's blending very nicely right here on the watercolor paper. So as I said, it's fun to use different color, different colors in your dragonflies and experiment a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with that now. I'm going to go into my lemon yellow and I'm going to pop some of that into this green. So I went from the blue to the green to the lemon yellow. Now you could do this the other way around and it would work as well. So you could start with your yellow and go to green and then go to blue. That would be fun. So. I'm just going along here now. My pencil lines are still here and I'm not concerned about the pencil lines because once it's dry, I can erase them or I can just choose to leave them. So maybe you want to go in with a little more color, maybe a little bit more blue along the edges. Notice that I didn't outline these with my brush first. I started filling it from the inside and let it work outward. So that's a, that's a good thing to remember. I also left a little bit of white here. In other words, there's no, no paint there. So I'm happy with those little wings. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna work on the bottom ones, which are actually called the hind wings. So kind of interesting. So again, I'm using clean water and I'm not soaking it. So there's no puddles on top of the paper, but it's it's being absorbed into the watercolor paper. So we want to give it a minute. If, you, if you're using too much water, it's going to sit on top like a big puddle. So you want to give it a couple minutes to soak right in. How are we on time, Tom? It's almost 1.30. Okay. We're doing good. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing on these wings here. I'm going to start with my blue and just let it flow from this area right here. Well, they don't have to be the same. They can be different. You can have a little bit more blue coming along with this one. If you want to move the color that you've applied, just take your brush with some clean water on it and move it along the bottom of the brush stroke that you made. That's called softening an edge. You can also pull color away by using your brush to lift the color. And then I'm wiping my brush on a little piece of tissue. So I'm gonna do that again here. Okay. I'm gonna dip into my green again and bring some of that along this area here. And I'm just sort of dotting it in for fun. It's always good to keep your colors fresh, use, use fresh paint, have a clean place to mix your colors. <laughs> I have to remind myself of that. Wash your palette. If you don't have a palette, you can always just use a, a plate that'll work or a plastic plate of some kind. Lots of things will work. Watercolors are very, very versatile as far as traveling and painting in lots of different places. So 
Right now I'm just dot, um, dotting in that yellow in different spots. So, and again, if you want to get more, have more pigment and get it a little stronger than just rinse your brush off and get some fresh pigment, pig, fresh color and pop it in. All right. All right, so there we go. It's kind of a cute little dragonfly. And now I'm going to use my brush with blue and some green and a little bit of red and get a nice dark and do his little arms here or his legs. These are his arms, right? <laughs> okay. And so when I do that, I, I really need to anchor my hand on the table. So if, you're, if your work is, is still wet, you might want to wait to do this part. Okay. All right. So there we go. I'm going to let that dry a little bit before I do the background. So we have enough time that we can do one more. And I will do the one that I did on the um, lily pad. So you can do that one with me if you want to. Does anybody have a question? Nope. <laughs> okay. Well, so I'm going to do another one while this, this one is drying, the one that I just did. And I'm going to change it up just a little bit. I think with this one, let me think about it a minute. I'm going to use pinks and yellows. I think that'll be really pretty because it's going to be on the lily pad. It's going to be resting on the lily pad or hovering over it. I think I'm, oh, thanks, Tom. Tom just brought me some, it's getting us some fresh water, so that's really nice. All right, so this one, I'm gonna start with his body again, and kind of like the one that I did right here, I used the pinks. I was thinking about the, the photograph that I, I think I showed you guys earlier, that, that dragonfly. Let's see, I'll hold it up. It's got this gorgeous pink body. So you could go in with some pinks and purples here, but I think yellow would be fun to add into this as well. So I'm gonna use my pink, and if you don't have pink, you could use a color called alizarin crimson. That works really well. I've watered this down a bit so that it's not really strong. I've added water to this, this pink. Thank you. This is called Permanent Rose. I think it's cotton. So there's my color. And I'm just going to do it the same way that I did my other one. I'm going to start right up here at his little head. It's a really pretty pink. And I think purple would be pretty with this too. All right. So same thing, just filling it in. I'm going to leave some white highlights there. I just left a little white. And I'm going to get start working down his abdomen area now. Again, I'm leaving the lights on one side as highlights. And that just means that I paint around a shape. I leave a shape empty and I paint right around it. That's all that is. Now I did not dampen this first because again, it's a very, very small area. I didn't outline. I just worked my way um, along here, pretty much starting in the center of the shape 
and working my way out. This little guy is a lot smaller than the one that I um, did previously. So, and I should count and see if I have 10. I'm not sure if I do or not. Yep, okay, good. So I'm gonna get into a little bit of uh, purple here, which I think will be very pretty with this. Mama, we're making our dragonfly. Can you please get our piece of paper? <laughs> I see. I hear someone's sweet voice. I'm glad you guys are all here today. It's awesome. We're very grateful that you all join in with these classes. I'm using a little bit of purple here along the bottom of each of these segments just to give it a little more definition. Okay, that one went pretty quick, didn't it? All right, so I'm gonna move and do his, his wings. And I think I'm gonna stick with, well, I didn't go in, I think I'll go in with a little bit of the yellow too here, but whoops, you gotta rinse your brush off, don't you, before you go. <laughs> so I got a little pink there, that's okay. So I'm going to dampen this again. Note to self, yeah. permanent rose is a staining color. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> yep. Okay, so I dampened. Let me, let's go here and get these other ones ready. So you can come up with your own composition which is really fun to do you could have them flying and flying around and different positions you could do them um, instead of just like this you could have a side view which would be fun so again i'm doing the same technique popping in my color and letting it flow into the dragonfly's wing and i'm also using a bit of purple in here to let it flow right you can also take my paper and um, turn it in different directions and when I do that it's very fun because the excuse me the watercolor will flow in the direction that I hold the paper so I'm holding it so it's kind of making this cool design right now flowing down <laughs> and I can also do that on the other wing too which is whoops really kind of neat Purposely left some parts again where I didn't put paint there. If I put paint down and I, and like I said before, if I want to get rid of some of that, then I just take my brush and I can pull it out, pull the color out and, and get some more paper white happening. Okay, I'm going to move down to these bottom wings. Again, getting it wet first and working with that color, kind of doing the same thing. This one I did a little bit differently. I'm taking my brush and just kind of letting it make some marks into the wet area. Now, this one started to dry on me, so I've got to re-wet it. OK, 
Okay. Should we open it up for questions, Tom? What do you think? Sure. Maybe in a couple more minutes we'll do that. I'm going to try and get a background done on this other one for you, and then we'll do the lily pad. one because I don't think we have enough time to like find everybody. Okay. Well if there's questions. No questions. No questions thus far. Okay. We lost two people. Mm -hmm. So it seems like on mine the middle part of the um Dragonfly is much more heavier than the than the wings. Oops. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I would say that the the body part is yes, it's it's stronger in pigment than the wings. The wings are some of the dragonflies have very transparent wings. So I would treat it that way. I would make the body, you know, the, with the majority of your color there and then let the wings be soft. Does that answer your question? Look at mine. mine my first one got too thick. Okay, hold it up so I can see. Hold it up to your camera. Okay. Oh, that's nice. You think so? Yeah, I think I'd, I'd have to see it. It's hard to see it from here, unfortunately, but um, yeah. maybe show me one more time, okay? Okay. This is great, you guys. Yeah, so maybe um, just don't use quite so much pigment, so much paint when you do the wings. Take a little lighter touch to them. You mean the first one I did? Well, the first one I did, I made a mistake with the paint color. It was too dark. And that's why I got the really dark wings. Oh. Well, that's okay. I mean, I think I must have done about 10 of these because I was wanting to practice. And it, it takes time to think about what colors are going to work well together. And, oh, um, but, but the and, bottom and one okay. also to understand how much paint to use the thickness of the paint. And that's something to get used to with watercolor, right? Yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah, I'm not used to it at all. <laughs> this is well, brand new. I was, yeah. I was happy that I found these classes. Well, it's so great. We've got a lot that are recorded from previous weeks that you can look oh, you at. Know. There's drawing classes. There are lots of things for young people as well. So we're just excited to be able to do this. So thank you guys so much for joining in today. It's awesome. I, have a, I also have a question, if you don't mind. Okay. I, um, I'm like totally new to this and I've been using, you know, I don't, I don't know what kinds of paints to buy. Oh. Um, right now I'm using a palette of like hard, you know, watercolors. Okay. What do you recommend? Oh, where is that? Little case. I just stepped away for a minute. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So this, I don't know if you can see it. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Can you see this? So this is um a, a little palette uh, and paint that Larry at the Rum River they they sell this as a kit. And if you look on the website, you can see that you can purchase watercolor paper, I think there's a brush included maybe, um, oh. and this nice uh, set. 
because these are these are this is a very good quality paint set. So you can oh, purchase great. these, okay. which is a great way to get started. Um, yeah, and I buy most of my, you know, I get the tube paints, which is a little bit different, but if you're just starting out, that's great. This is the brush that I really like, and I've been, I could be like a, could be a, have an advertisement for this brush. This is a Princeton brush. They sell it at Walmart, or not Walmart, I'm sorry, at Michael's, and it's a number 10. And this is a watercolor brush. So, you know, this is a, a good one to have. I hope that answers a little bit of your questions. We yes, also have, we have a class starting um, next week, I think, right, Tom? Yes. And it's a four-week watercolor class online that we'll be doing. I'll be teaching it. Tom will be here with me. And it, it, you can also purchase the kit, I believe, for that class. So you might consider that. Great. Yeah. I went and picked up a kit this morning, and it came with this kind of paints. I mean, similar, but that's the brand name. Okay. Perfect. Okay, great. Well, Did you get a brush, too? Yep. I got the, the smaller, thin brush that came with it, but I'm going to go out and get a couple bigger brushes. Yep. So when you get your watercolor brushes, make sure that you don't get like one of those really long handled brushes. Those are not as easy to use. So I like to get, I forget how, how long this is. It's probably about one, two, three, four, five, maybe six inches long. It's not really right, Tom, don't you think? Yeah. You want it and you want to get a good one. That's got nice, um, it comes to a nice point. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is Elite Princeton Round. So it's a good one. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, Abby. So um, keep practicing on them. We're going to. Um, Really what it is is just being very delicate. There's Abby. Oh, that's pretty, Abby. Nice. Oh, that's nice. I think that's lovely. Thumbs up. Yep, I say th thumbs up to that. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, very nice. Like, very hard-edged. Oh, look at that. I feel the cat's in the way. But look at that. So basically, you can use any color you want. For the wings? Yeah. For any, for, yeah. Really? Yeah, you can play around with it, but I make sure that when you do that, when you combine your colors, that they're going to work nicely together. In other words, you don't want to make mud, and that happens when you mix... Um, the complements together that can create a very gray. Okay. Stop our video. All right. Oh. So now I'm going to go back over to the one I did first. Okay. And I'm going to do the lily pad. So I'm working around the dragonfly. I'm not going to go putting any water on the dragonfly's body. I'm just dampening the paper around it inside where I made the, the lily pad. Okay, so I'm getting that wet with clean water. That's why it's good to have a couple buckets or yogurt containers or whatever you have, cottage cheese or something, and have clean water available. Don't work with dirty water because it will just mess up your colors basically. Okay. It's 10 to 2. 10 to 2. Okay, we're doing good. So I'm just using some green here and I'm going to mix it in with a bit of warm yellow. I've got Hansa yellow, which is another wonderful pigment. I'll show you what I've got mixed up right here. Whoops. <laughs> That's my green with the Hansa yellow. And I've dampened the lily pad. And I'm going to just start popping in my green here, leaving the highlights. In other words, leaving some white areas. These could be like 
where the sun is glistening or shining right on the lily pad. And I'm going to work my way up to the dragonfly's body, but I'm not going to get any paint there. And that will work because the dragonfly is dry that I painted. Okay. And I'm popping in a, a, a little brighter green into this mix here, so it's not all the same color. I'm using my brush um, with some strokes that are, let's see, I'm dabbing a little bit and I'm also using my brush up and down. Notice again, just repeating this, I didn't outline because I did not want to get a hard edge. We call that a hard edge when you outline something and then it starts to dry, right? And then you end up with a hard edge. So I avoided that. You can always fix that if it happens, so don't worry. You can always fix that and remove that hard edge if you need to. Okay, so I'm just getting this little lily pad done real quick here. On my other painting, I'm going to just do some grasses. I think that would be pretty. No. What do you do if you have a hard edge? How do you fix that? Okay, I'm going to show you in a minute. I don't want to make one on my paper to show you, but I'll do it on another sheet of paper, okay? <laughs> All right. So right now I'm just dotting in some color or dabbing it in. I guess that's another really good word yeah. to um, use. Um, I need to pick up art projects for my kids that are in the next door, sir. Thank you. Yep, you're Okay. All right. So how do you fix a hard edge? Okay, I'll show you a couple of different ways. I just want to get this organized before it gets too dry. I like to work into the wet wash and let things mix and get some different um, lights and darks happening, which is always a nice thing to do. All right. So I'll let that dry, and I'm going to show you real quick. We're running out of time here. Show you on the, yeah. Well, we can go over a little bit, can't we? We might go over just a bit. So here's a fresh piece of paper. I'm just working on the back of something. That's fine. So let's say that I make a mark here with my, with my brush, and there's a hard edge, right? So one of the things you can do is to take your brush and get some clean water on it and go below that hard edge and soften it. So it's called softening away. Some people call it softening, softening an edge. So I just put clean water on there and brought that down. Here I'll do it with pink and see if we can see it better. There's a line that I made in pink. Clean water, bring it below it, and it should flow right into it and kind of move that. So on this side of the line that I made, it's soft. I hope that makes sense. You can also, again, pull color away. Let's say that I don't want this edge here. I can take my brush with clean water, dry it off with my tissue, and kind of work up to that edge and pull some of that color out. Now again, this is a staining pigment like Tom reminded me, so it's a little harder to get it, move it, but you can also use a tissue to pull it away, okay? So that's one of the ways we call softening an edge. I'll do it one more time. This time I'm wetting the paper first and I'm going to take my brush and go across here. No hard edges because I dampened it first. 
So that's a, that's another way that you can help to not end up with those hard edges. Now sometimes you're going to want a hard edge, right? So, but you you want to learn to be able to control that situation. Okay, so I'm going to go back over here and get this other lily pad painted real quick. And then the last thing I'm going to do here is once everything's dry, I can add my water around the painting here. So, but I want to make sure. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Um, from Rachel and Ellen. Yeah. How do you make your picture more realistic? Well, that's a really good question. Um, I think that the realism aspect has a lot to do with the drawing. So in when we draw things, we call it observational drawing because we're looking at it carefully to see how it's made, whatever it is we're drawing. So I would say that you need to really look and observe and practice your drawing skills. Do you have anything to add to that, Tom? That's a really good question. Um, with realistic painting, you also want to be able to um, mix your colors as accurately as possible to match the subject matter. And you want to slowly build things up in layers on top of one another so that you can get that accuracy of depth. Yep. Yeah, that's absolutely, you know, spot on because it's the, the drawing, it's the, <laughs> the color mixing that's going to make it more realistic if that's what you're going for. <laughs> you know, I think it's really fun to also respond to the subject matter in a way that makes it your own. So we don't always, you know, we don't always have to make everything perfectly realistic. We can make it, make it our own idea about the subject matter. So there's my little lily pads. Remember, I can go back later when I have more time and things are dry. I can add more details here if I want to, and I can do some line work and detail work in the wings. But I'm going to let that dry, and I'm going to go back here to the the first, well, this was the second one I did, right? And I'm going to add some grasses to this in my background. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to get it wet because I want this to be soft. So this is, again, we're talking about soft edges. And I'm getting this damp back here. And I'm going to go up here, too, even though this might dry pretty quickly. But I'm just going to get this nice and damp. OK. And you could draw first before you paint, or you can just go ahead and add your grasses if you want to. Now make sure that you like the green that you mix up. So check it first. That's a pretty green that I mixed. If I want it to have a little bit more um, blue in it, then I would add a little blue to my green. I can also add yellow to my green, and that's really nice. So I'm thinking about how grass is. Here's the dragonfly, and this is going to be more a little blue up here in this corner. But I'm taking my brush from the bottom of the paper, which is here, and just making some brush strokes that are going to move upward. So the dragonfly is flying this way to the right on mine. And so I'm going to make some marks that go the other way just to make it interesting. Sorry about it. So I changed the green from a, a yellow green to a little um, truer green, maybe. I guess that would be the word for it. But you can see that the edges of the brush strokes are very soft because this is, this is relatively damp. So again, I'm going to take my brush and move it up here and make some more marks. And maybe it skips, skips behind the dragonfly, which is kind of pretty. 
So I want to make these not all the same height. I've kind of changed it up a little bit. And I think that looks kind of pretty. And I might make some smaller ones here with my brush. They're kind of going in different directions, which makes it sort of interesting. Okay, and back, skip, skip. You can just leave the background white if you want to. You don't have to completely fill it all up. And real quickly, I'm going to add a little bit of blue. A little bit of blue up in here where it's still damp. And just get a little wash here of, of blue. And I'm just moving this paint around here, leaving some white. And maybe over here too. Okay, so do we have time for you guys to show me your your paintings real quick, if anyone wants to share. Okay, show us your paintings. This is mine. Oh, that is gorgeous. Good job. Where's my, where's my video? Oh my gosh. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, hold them up so we can see. We'll have show and tell. <laughs> Hi, Barb. Keep going. Keep your eye. Keep your eye. Please. Very nice. I like how you put two on the paper, Barb. That's cool. There's some new ones. These are awesome. This is mine. There you go. Is that, is that Joan? Where's yours? Do I have that one? Very nice, everybody. And that's mine. There you go. So, pretty one. Today we've had as many as 62 people for the class. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This is mine. Are awesome. Oh, pretty. Hi, Renee. Yeah. Let's see yours. Oh, I'm looking at them. It's cool. Yeah, we're kind of scrolling through the pages so we can see everybody's artwork. And now we need to have another session to learn how to make dandelions. Oh, that would be a fun That'd one. Right. Yeah. That. Thank you, everybody. It's very good artwork today. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun. Good. Thank well, thank you. Join us again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have to do. Thank you. Oh, how cute, oh. Carol. Nancy. No, Nancy, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's hard to see all of them because it's I'm I'm at a table and then the uh the computer is on another table, so I'm it's awesome though. Really good. I'm so grateful for all of you joining us. Thank you. And again, Thank look for fun. more classes at the Art Thank Center. You. Oh, I love that top one, Julie. That's so pretty. With Thank you. Um, yeah, so look for the classes that are coming. There's a new one starting up next week. And I'd love to have you join that class if you want to. Um, and then there, there's another one in a couple weeks, right, on a Monday. Yes. There's drawing classes, too. And Larry's got all kinds of cool stuff happening. So, well, that was great. That was great. Did you thank have you. fun? Yay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so you can. Play. All right. Goodbye. Okay. Right. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Have a good week and a good Fourth of July. Hi, Judy. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.